All right, guys, um, we are going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I want to first just thank you guys all for joining our March educational webinar. Tonight, we're going to be talking about how to make the most of your Reads Across America page. All location coordinators, um, co-correlate location coordinators, group leaders, and co-group leaders have access to the Reads Across America group and location page for which you're registered. Um, the dashboard is where you will go to access everything you need to manage your group and location page. Mm -hmm. From the dashboard, you can customize your Reads Across America page with a photo and text, and you can also add page alerts. Um, we're going to be talking about those today. Um, in addition, we also you will have access to for messaging for your supporters, viewing group counts, um, and tracking grade specific requests. Um, for full tutorial on those features, you can visit our volunteer resource page and download the dashboard tutorial, which we currently are making some updates to. So there is one on there now, but check back in about another week for a um, much more in-depth one. So let's start with the basics of getting logged into the Reads Across America dashboard. First, every page owner will need to create their own unique login. That's linked to the email that's on file with Reads Across America. So when you go to log in, you just want to make sure that you use the email that you provided the liaison when you registered. If you use a different um, email or you want to use a different email, you just need to let your liaison know because it won't link up properly. On your first visit to the Reads Across America dashboard, you will need to click on the sign up now where you'll be prompted to enter the username and password. When creating your password, keep in mind that it must be at least eight characters, contain one uppercase, one number, and one spe special character. Um, and then your username and password is also case and space sensitive. So, um, for some of you that if they have the default username, it's usually your first and last name. So mine would be Julie Bright. Um, it is capital J, capital B, and there is a space in there. And if you don't type it like that, it will lock you out. Um, if you type it in three times wrong, you will also get locked out. And then from then on, it's just going to say, um, no, I, it just says incorrect information. I'm trying to think. <laughs> It's been a while since I've been locked myself out. Um, when you get locked out, you do have to contact your liaison. So anytime you have trouble um, getting signed in or you get locked out, just reach out to your liaison and we can help you with that. Once you're in your dashboard, you will see several different options to choose from. We're going to start with the registration to do's. The registration to do's is where most of the information that is displayed on your Reads Across America page page is pulled from, so it's important to always make sure that it's accurate. The registration to do items for your group and locations are primarily completed by your regional liaison. However, please take the time to review each item to ensure that the information listed is correct. If you notice any corrections that need to be made, just update the information and then click save and complete. If an item is gray, that means it has been completed. You can still click on it to review the information on file and make changes. If an item is blue, that means it has not been completed and we do need that missing information as soon as possible. If you need to add or remove helpers from your page or if the lead person will be changing, please always contact your liaison first so that we can make those changes for you. The next option in your dashboard is the customization piece. The customization section is where you can edit all photos and text that show publicly on your page. We encourage you to take the time to make your Reads Across America page your own because your Reads Across America page is the easiest way to connect with your local community about how they can help further the mission to remember, honor, and teach. You can also use it to highlight upcoming fundraising events or share details about your wreathling ceremony or to spotlight local veterans and how they've made an impact on your community or to show your community what you're doing locally to give back and make a positive impact.
In the customization to do section, you can update the banner by adding your own photo. This is the quickest and easiest way to grab the attention of supporters. The subtitle can also be edited. However, you want to make sure you limit it to just a sentence or two so that it doesn't push your sponsor a wreath button down. And that subtitle is this little, um, let's see if I can, I don't have my thing up. Um, it's the section between your group name and that sponsor or wreath button. That is your subtitle. And if you put too much text in there, it'll push your sponsor wreath and volunteer button down um, and people won't be able to see it. Um, also any words that are in that section that have, that are in double brackets, in your customization to do's, you will want to keep those as those will update throughout the system um, simultaneously. So typically you're gonna see your wreath laying date in there um, and that is going to update each year so that you don't have to manually go in and change it. Um, also, if you're a group page, that is going to be updated with information from the location page. So you want to make sure you keep that in there so you're not having to constantly edit it and so that your page isn't showing incorrect information. For groups and organizations, um, you can also add your logo. This is a great way to let people know which organization your group represents. The main text of your page is called the summary text. And this is a great place to add specific details about your ceremony or other wreath events through the year. A lot of people utilize this to put ceremony details such as what time to be there, where volunteers should arrive, um, where they parking information, um, instructions for you know sponsoring very specific wreaths. Um, it, really the possibilities are endless. And you can also change the, the format of the text in there. You can bold certain things um, to make them stand out more. Cards are that little box that links to your Reads Across America page that show at the bottom of another Reads Across America page. So for group cards, they're visible on a location page. Um, that your group supports. And for the location cards, those are visible on the group page that support your location. So when you scroll down to the bottom of your location or group page and you see it says locations that support us or groups that support us and then vice versa, all those little boxes down there, those are the cards that we're referring to. You can edit the card for your group or location by clicking card, photo, title summary found under the customization to do's. One thing that we have found is that the cards that are customized are more likely to be clicked on than those that aren't customized. So put a unique picture that will stand out from all of those that are using the default picture. Keep in mind that if your group supports multiple locations, by default, your card will only show the information for the primary location. Um, so if you are sponsoring multiple locations, we encourage you to edit your card to show the details of the other locations as well. Another quick and easy way to make your page stand out is to make sure that you are utilizing your wreathometer. Your wreathometer is linked to your research orders. So as wreath orders come in, your wreath turns green. The goal you see on your wreathometer can be changed under registration to do's. We try to always put a default number in. So if you see that your number, your wreath is gray, but you are showing wreath sponsorships, that just means that you don't haven't had a, a goal entered yet. Um, and again, you can edit that right through your registration to do's. For the group, it's listed under um, your sponsorship goal. And for the locations, it's under your wreaths grave count, sponsorship count, it's kind of like all mushed together. Um, and again, on the new dashboard tutorial that's going to be um, updated on the volunteer resource page, it's gonna show you a step-by-step -step how you can edit each one of those. Using your wreathometer goal is, is a great way to, um, using your wreathometer goal to share on social media is a great way to motivate your community to get involved in sponsor wreaths. Um, we also saw last year people would, uh, make kind of their own um, wreathometer out of a poster board and they would kind of color it in to put at like booths and tables um, last year to also kind of show everyone where they're at. You know, everyone likes to see 
to help be that person to, to complete that goal. So it's just a great resource that you can use. So now that we've showed you a few different ways to customize your page using photos, we're gonna talk about how you can add them. So to get started, you're gonna click on the libraries and then click on images to add photos to your image library. Just like you have an image library on your cell phone, you also have an image library in your dashboard. So this is where you will store all the pictures that you want to put on your Reads Across America page. It's easiest to add all of your photos first and then choose them as you go through the customizations. Once you save an image in your library, it might take a few minutes to fully process. Once they are processed, you can add the pictures to a photo album. And if you don't see the picture, try refreshing your internet browser. And if that doesn't work, you can always reach out to your regional liaison for help. Um, as you guys all know, some of you that have been doing this for a while, sometimes our photos are a little um, finicky and sometimes it's just the photo is too large. We have to resize it. So um, if you are getting frustrated with a photo and having troubles with it, again, just reach out to your liaison and we'll get that added for you. Once you add your photos, you can go in and organize them into albums. Just go to the manage albums that's on your dashboard and then click the plus sign in the bottom right hand corner to create a new album. Next, you'll be prompted to name the album and then add photos. You can also add the photos directly to the photo album, but the preferred method is to add them all to your photo image library first. And we will send the slides to this webinar to everyone afterwards. Um, we just did not have them ready ahead of time to send with a webinar reminder. Another great resource for your page is to create a page alert. A page alert is a box, as a message that immediately pops up in a box when someone visits your page. You can use the page alert to let donors know about special opportunities like the matching campaign, to share details about your refling ceremony or cleanup date. And to get, to get started, just click on manage in your dashboard and then select page alert. You will be prompted to fill out a title and text briefly describing what you want to promote. When you're selecting the time for it, to if you want it to show immediately, we recommend you set it to the previous day because it is in a, it's based off of the time zone. So it takes usually a, few, a couple hours for it to show if you don't backdate that time. Um, if you do oversee multiple pages, you always wanna make sure that you check, double check that page name that this is posting to the right page. So if you are a location coordinator and a group leader and you want to post um, a page alert about what time people should be show up to help place wreaths, um, you probably wanted to put this on your location page and not your group page. We appreciate all that you guys do as volunteers and we wanna make your jobs easy. So we've created templates for just about anything you might need. And um, we're you know always constantly coming up with new ideas of new templates that we can help provide for you guys. Um, you can find all of these Reads Across America approved and updated forms, documents, marketing materials, logos, press releases, and the dashboard tutorials on the volunteer resource page. If you wanna customize an image or document, Reads Across America does need to approve that prior to any printing or distribution. So for approval, just email a copy to your liaisons and we'll get that to where it needs to go to get it approved for you. If you create a QR code, we also wanna make sure that you um, always double check that your link goes to your sponsorship group that supports your location so that you receive credit for those orders. And if you need help with any of that, again, you can always reach out to your liaisons. So I know that that was a lot of information that we just went through very quickly. Um, again, it was kind of a brief overview. We do have um, more detailed step-by-step -step, um, tutorial that's going to be coming that we will share. And we'll probably send it out in like the next email that we send out to all locations and groups so that you'll have that as well. Um, but in the meantime, we'll go ahead and just open it up for any questions if anyone has any.
I've got one. The uh, the poster that you had is that available on the website? The one with the QR code? Yes. Yes, that is the Reads Across America Day poster, and it is on that volunteer resource page. Um, I believe we have it in um, a Word document that you can edit, but if you need help getting that changed up, getting the QR code and stuff put in there, you just reach out to your liaison and they can do it for you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, what kind of pictures do could you use if this is the first year to um, sponsor this event? Um, I would recommend, I mean, going out, maybe taking pictures of your local cemetery where you're going to be placing the wreaths. It doesn't necessarily have to be a picture of, you know, wreaths on the graves. Um, just kind of letting people know because people who are local are going to, they know what that cemetery looks like. And so to have a picture there so they can connect it like, oh, this is my, this is my town cemetery. I want to help support it. Um, you can also get pictures of volunteers if you have like a, a cemetery cleanup day where you go out and you're volunteering to help clean up the cemetery, um, maybe different fundraising events that you do. I mean, really it can be, it could be any picture. We also have photos on the group resources location and group resources page that you can download from other um, events if you want to see wreaths on headstones. So you can certainly pull from that too. A good starting photo would be the a photo of the sign for the cemetery itself. If you don't have anything else that's, that stands out, at least people will notice or recognize that sign. Yep, that's a great idea as well. A question on the cleanup. Uh, how long do you wait before you pull that trigger to start cleaning up? Um, it really is going to vary based off of cemeteries. So most of our state veteran cemeteries and national cemeteries are required to clean them up before the end of January. Um, some of our other cemeteries, if they're in the South, they're probably going to pick those up same time, January, February, or they're going to be pretty brown looking. Um, but we have some up North that they don't clean them up until after the snow melts in the spring. Um, so really what we just ask is that the wreaths are always removed before they become unsightly because we certainly don't want someone to go visit their loved one and to have a, a dead wreath on their grave. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll just let you know, all the cemeteries I have, and I have six of them, they actually pick the, they'll, they pick the wreaths up for us at the end of it at about uh, maybe three and a half, four weeks out after the fact. That's nice. Sometimes longer. That's always nice when you have the cemeteries that will do that. I'm sure all the people who have to go out and clean and get the reason are, are a little jealous right now for that. <laughs> and, and, and for pictures, I would take a, a picture of the entrance, put it on the website. And most of the, I'm, I have like six different places and I have the all things set up. And I have the uh, pretty much every picture that's in the thing is from one of our cemeteries. Some of them are mixed and matched. They went from either ones in different places over the last what is it, four years. They've gotten to take pictures. So some have wreaths and some don't, but overall it looks pretty good. Another suggestion for your pictures might be if you're lucky enough to have a monument. Um, so our, yeah, ours is a picture of our monument. We have a veterans monument, so. Oh, nice. Yeah, I, I, we've seen quite a variety of um, different pictures that are on there. And you can also, you know, kind of go and look at, um, go to the Reads Across America website, go to search locations, and you can just kind of go by state and like look through some other pages to see kind of what they've done. Um, and again, you can always reach out to your leads on, we can send you pages that we know that people are really customizing a lot so you can kind of see what they've done too. If you have a Medal of Honor winner in your cemetery, could you put that as one of your pictures or would you need some sort of family member permission? Um, I would say if anytime you're using someone's specific name, it doesn't matter if it's a Medal of Honor recipient or just you know anybody, I would make sure that if you're using someone's name that you have some general, if you're taking just a shot necessarily, a close up of someone's headstone, I would probably get permission before posting that. Yeah, if it was from the Civil War. Oh, well, if that's the case, then yeah. 
<laughs> you probably won't get permission in that scenario. Um, yeah, I think as long as you're putting some reference, some context to it, um, does that make sense? So, you know, maybe doing a little research about that veteran and, yeah. and you know, how he received or um, how he received his recognition, that would be a great way to, you know, provide that context would be good. Awesome, always, thanks. I always go through the, the cemetery director. I was going to say, if it's a cemetery that's maintained by someone, um, I would just, you could clear it with them because then that way, if they have any concerns, but you know, if it's a civil war, some more rev revolutionary wars, you know, there's probably not going to be too much backlash um, of the, for using those. I have several um, graves that I would like to put uh, extra reliefs on, like the Revolutionary War veterans graves. Uh, can I order extra reliefs for graves that are not in a registered location? So you're saying you want to, you, your registered location, there's another cemetery that has some Revolutionary War veterans that you would like to take reefs to place on, not like right. extras, like you want to race on this grave. You're saying you want to take them from your, from your registered location and place them there, correct? Right, or can I order extra race to do that? Yep, so we, you can certainly do that. And we have a lot of locations that will actually um, do that. They, if it's a, somewhere where they're not necessarily going to be covering all the veterans or holding a ceremony um, and they just have like a family member who wants to order one or two, um, they will order extras through their location and then they will take them and place them at the other cemetery. Um, that is something that's a special arrangement that you can set up directly with your liaison. Very good, thank you. Mm -hmm. I just had a question on wreaths ordering. Uh, if we get everything up and running our, on our site and we're pretty good at it, managing it, let's just say it's now April, um, is we can start ordering wreaths immediately or is there a time when you start to trigger the ordering? Uh, nope. As soon as your page goes live, you can start having um, the orders go through it. So oh, okay. usually when you fill out your um, sign up for new groups, and new locations, um, as soon as you get your welcome email with your location ID, group ID, and your link, you are good to go to start ordering. Um, the only thing, just keep in mind, if you have, if you are a location coordinator and a group leader, you want to make sure that you're always sharing that group link. Because if you share the location link and people sponsor wreaths just through the location and not through your group, you're not going to get that $5 back or three for two um, option that you are using. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Changing the topics just a little bit. Um, I'm in a northern. I'm in northern Idaho. What happens if we have a bad weather coming up on wreath day? Um, so we always leave it up to the location coordinators to postpone um, wreath laying as needed. Um, we do provide you with um, templates that you can use, press release templates that you can use when that happens. The biggest thing is just making sure that you get the word out to the community because we certainly don't want um, people showing up at the cemetery in bad weather um, because they didn't get the message that it was postponed to the next day or whenever. But we, you know, we value everyone's um, safety. So we're, we're going to leave that up to you guys to make that call locally. I would just add, Charlene, that, you know, there's a difference between bad weather, like as in snowstorm that's dangerous and, you know, some rain. Obviously, we, you know, we, we place wreaths, rain or shine. So just keeping that in mind, we try to, um, we, we tend to have more of the northern areas, have more of the winter weather that we have to deal with. And we do have templates available if that's the case. Yeah. I was worried about the roads to get there more. So that would have been snow. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I put, on, uh, I put out on mine in South Carolina that the only way we are, would postpone or cancel is for ice or lightning. Um, <clears throat> if it's raining, if it's snowing, we will be out there placing wreaths. If it's 100 degrees and, and hot, we will be out there placing wreaths. But um, ice and thunderstorms is the only thing on ours. And we put that out. I put that out to my sponsorship groups. And when I post it, the flyer on um, some of the marketplace for our county, I put that in there also, just so that people know if it's raining, you still we still need people to come out and place a wreath because we're going to do them. Yeah, 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, Lynn, you've got your hand raised, so we're going to hop over to you. Great, thank you so much. You know, on the location variable, it has a space after the location. So if you want to add a, an apostrophe S, it looks like it's like Fort Rosecrans space and then the apostrophe S. Is there any way for the tech folks to remove that space from the location variable? I'm a little lost. <laughs> You're talking about like in the short link or like in the on your page where the custom text is? Yeah, on the page where the custom text is. So, you know, like that variable, that variable location, it brings in your location name. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. So it's followed by a space. So if you're doing your location's name with an apostrophe S, you have a space between, you know, the last letter of your location name and the apostrophe. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yeah, the answer is yes. We can change. We can fix that. Okay. I will. I'm going to write it down on my list and I'm going to look at it tomorrow because I don't know the answer to tell you right now, but I know that it can because I've done it before. It's just been okay. a while. Perfect. Thank you so much. And then one other thing, um, you know, on the opening page, the text, it's gray and it's kind of a, a light gray. So it's a little difficult to read and wondering if we could get like a darker shade or even black for that. That is something we're looking at. Um, we're wanting to, to do a little bit of maintenance to those pages. Um, so it is something that other people have mentioned and we are looking at. I don't have an answer for that right now. Um, you can bold certain things, so it does stand out a little bit more, but it is right. it is a little light sometimes. Yeah, you for sure. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, Penny, you've got your hand raised, so we're gonna jump over to you. Okay. Uh, we put on our web page, they have to be ordered before October 1st, because this is our first year. And everybody I talk to here in our town is not familiar with this. And so we felt we had to put a deadline or people would try to order them by Christmas. Um, well, I mean, as we do know a lot of people that, you know, will put earlier deadlines out there, we actually, our cutoff date is always the Monday after Thanksgiving. And we have a cutoff form that's in place that will allow you to take donations um, and then submit what's kind of like an IOU to us to let us know that I, I have this many checks in hand that I'm sending in for X number of reasons. So that way you can really take advantage of um, fundraising all through the month of November as well. I do, I would encourage you to move that date a little bit just because you're really going to, you know, Cut yourself short a little bit on that, um, but I, th it's, I think it's letting them know, like, hey, if you want your wreath in time to be placed, um, it needs to be in by November 29th this year. Is that when the cutoff date is? I'm waiting for someone, someone with a, one of my liaisons. Where are you guys at? What's the cutoff date? Look on my calendar. First Monday yeah, after right. Thanksgiving. I know. What's the date? 28th. So the last, the Monday, last couple of years. November 28th. November. The last couple of years, it's moved to the Tuesday after because of the uh, uh, whatever giving the day. Or... day. Yeah, we do try to always, it, whenever we can, we will always try to um, extend that so you guys can take advantage of Giving Tuesday. Um, but at a minimum, you know, if you say that the cutoff date is the 28th and then we extend it, that's just going to give you some like last minute, you know, to come in and we will always, we always tell people if we can catch the truck, we'll still take the order. I mean, we will up until the trucks roll out, um, we will try to take orders for you guys because we want to make sure that, you know, as many veterans for your cemetery is honored as can be. So um, we're always going to work with you guys on stuff like that. Yeah. And I would, Penny, I would recommend moving that date back because 75% of the re-sponsorships that we get come in after October 1st. Mm -hmm. uh, because people start getting more involved and in a lot of the school I have five or six schools as, as sponsorship groups and they do their stuff in November around Veterans Day okay so we will change the vast, it. yeah vast majority of my and I this is my third year uh, the vast majority have been after October 1st yeah um, all right Jenny you've got your hand raised so we're going to jump over to you uh, well, very simple question, I think. I was just wondering, this is, uh, last year was my first year doing this. 
the location and group codes all stay the same year after year. Is that correct? Yes, um, they will stay the same when you re register. You'll get another welcome email. It's just going to say, thanks for registering again. As a reminder, here is your previous um, group location ID, um, but they will stay the same. We try to keep it as simple as we can. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions from anyone? Michelle, you got your hand up. Hey, Julie. Um, yeah, we've had a couple of people have asked about moving the date earlier in December. I seem to think when we first started this, we've been doing it like 12 years, that we were like a week earlier in December, but then Thanksgiving was real close. So we shifted the date. Is there any chance that they would move it before the week before Thanksgiving or will it, I mean, Christmas, or will it always probably stay the week before Christmas? So it's gonna, it rotates between the second and third Saturday. Um, and I don't know those next couple of days, I think it's the third Saturday for the next year or two, and then it goes back to the second. Um, okay, Saturday. correct. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Have any of the suggestions that we gave to Logan for stuff for the store uh, in the works to hit the store yet? <laughs> Um, I, what, was, he, he posted, uh, yeah, nothing, the, yeah, nothing new is in the store yet as of the, some of the, the 2022 theme apparel is in there, but there's, uh, you know, they're working through that and Logan's on vacation this week. So, um, okay. We'll <clears throat> links available as there's new materials in the store. Okay. I'm, I'm really interested in a, in a banner. We'll get you. We'll get, we'll get it all. And whenever he will post that he tries to go on the Facebook page um, and share it on there as well and we'll be sending out emails as we can for some of the stuff when he gets out. We also, we also do a featured merchandise and location connection each month so every time there's like something new we usually post it in there as well. All right cool thank you. You're welcome. All right um, Mar Susie I'm going to hop to you first and then we're going to go over to Maurice. Hi um, I have a question I was reading I have my parents in I'm in California San Diego and my parents are in Las, at the Boulder City in Las Vegas, and my grandparents are in Minneapolis. I thought I read that I can order wreaths through my site in, in San Diego for those other two um, cemeteries, mm -hmm. correct? Yes, yes you okay. can. So when you go to your group page and you click on sponsor a wreath, that box is gonna come up. It's gonna ask you you to check, you know, if you want one wreath, two wreaths. Um, the only thing is you gotta make sure you order it um, it's, you're going to have to add it separately. So you would go on, you would do, you know, one wreath um, and then under locations, it's going to list your locations that your group is primarily registered to support. But then at the bottom, there's an option that says, um, or choose another location, um, participating location, something like that. You're going to click okay. on that and you can start typing in the code and it's going to pull up. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Maurice. Uh, good evening, all. Uh, I was curious if um, have all the checks gone out for the 2021 uh, season? The payback checks? Yes. Um, yes. The last update I received is all the payback checks through 2021 have gone out with the exception of a handful um, that they were there was issues with. So if you haven't received it, um, you can always reach out to your liaison if you're still waiting for some payback checks and we can just check on the status of that for you. Okay, thank you. I have a lot of bookkeeping to do up the chain of command in Civil Air Patrol. Yeah. All right. Anybody else got any other questions? All right. Well, if no one else has any other questions, we're going to. Um, Lynn, did you I have do. another question? Hello. I do. Uh, okay. Sorry, I forgot these. Um, in grave specifics. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I, I will, you know, this past year, some of the people, they won't put the location on there. And for me, there's 120,000 graves out there. So uh, the folks that are, you know, looking them up, it takes them a, a, <clears throat> a long time, like to find them. Is there a way that we could add on the web, on the website? Um, you know, I know that there's a calculation about how much they put in so far, like 50%, 75%, 100%. Can I put in there that I need 100% of the information being filled out for, for Rosecrans? Um, so that it basically forces them to put in a grave location? Yep, you could put it on your main page, um, like that, where that custom summary text is. 
Um, mm -hmm. I would put it there like for grade specifics, please note that you must include all the information um, in order for us to um, ensure placement. Um, you can also, when you go into your grade specific report, you can message those that are not at 100%. You can send a message out to anyone who is missing information to say, hey, you know, um, our, as of today, we do not have, have not received enough information to ensure placement of your grave specific wreath. Um, please submit, fill out the rest of the information. And what that does is that will actually send them a link right in their email, that template. And um, when they click on it, it will take them to a page where they can put the rest of the information in and it'll automatically update in your grade specific report. Okay. So they don't even have to worry about them having to message you and have you manually put it in. Um, it's, it's just gonna you know, prompt them to put that in. And then you can go in and continue just to filter through your grade specifics based off of those that aren't 100%. Okay, that's excellent. And, and one last thing I promise. <laughs> Um, when people put in the number of people that are attending with them, I had a person who put in 500, and I know it's, it's an error. Um, can the development team add like error checking in there so that it says like over a certain number, you know, maybe it's 100, they ask them, you know, are you sure that, you know, 500 is the correct number? Because mm -hmm. we probably meant 50 or maybe even five, but, you know, they put in 500. Yeah, I had someone do that for my, my little cemetery locally that has like 70 veterans and someone put like 200 people was coming and I'm like, I don't think, I don't think that's what you meant. And I, when I reached right. out, it was 20. So I know exactly what you're talking about. And mm -hmm. um, it's definitely something I can ask. It might be, you know, to see if it's, a, it's an easy, you know, formula that we can put in. But you can't always message them, you know, as well to just say like, hey, we're just checking. This is what you, um, you know, put in. Is this accurate? Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Michelle, you have another question? I do. Um, I did the birthday fundraiser and I believe, isn't there a form that I would have to fill out to send to you to show you the information for the final results? And where yes. would I find that? Um, can one of the liaisons drop that in the chat box for us? Thank you. I think it's in a couple of places, but you know, off the top of my head, I, we've sent it out a few times, um, but we'll drop it in the chat for you. Make it easy. I appreciate um, it. Harry, I I didn't you got your hand raised. Why? Yes, I do. I was just going to comment on the grave specifics. No, no comments from the peanut gallery. Uh, <laughs> if it's a national cemetery, you can also look up their information and pretty much take care of each specific grave request within about a minute or so, um, if it is a national cemetery. There's, a, there's an online grave locator for that. And if you can get to them early enough, hopefully, as Julie said, I was gonna mention, but you can email them back and say, hey, listen, we've only got 50%, 75%. Um, and I believe there is also an option on there to specify on the website, uh, to specify what exactly is required mm -hmm. for each grave specific. So you can say, um, for our cemetery, we don't require the row, but we require the uh, location and the marker number. So I. So that I, there, it does ask that, but it doesn't. That doesn't work right now. Um, so that is not the best way to to force require that specific information. Um, but I'm glad you mentioned the um, link, Harry, because that was something I wanted to say too. <laughs> when you send those messages out, you could drop the link to the National Grave Site Locator right in those messages, because then some people who might not have that handy um, can click on the link and find it. And then again, fill out that information so that it automatically updates it, um, you know, to save it time, because we know um, everyone is has lots of stuff going on here as volunteers and trying to do all those grave specifics can sometimes get timely. Um, Julie, mm -hmm. um, I have a question on the um, in memory of or in honor of. I've had some of my sponsors are asking, how do you do? I look up the person that I wanted uh, to be in honor of or in memory of, and I'm not finding the names either. And I'm just wondering 
what is there a link or a menu path to get to that area to look? For example, I've got one here with a in memory of Major John B. Carter II, Army Major, West Virginia. And it went in on the WE sponsor form, and we're not finding him. Um, when did you send the form in? Was it done during season? It was uh, December 2nd. That was the last one that went in, but I have one that went in in um, early November. And he's uh, Mr. Phillips. Okay. Um, we I would send that to your liaison and we can check into it for you. Um, what may be have happened is when the stuff that comes in like right at the end of the year, like in end of November and or December, um, when they're put into the system in batches because they're getting, you know, so many checks um, a day, they put them in in batches, they just put the wreath in and then they have to go in and they have to manually type in all those in memory honor of this that come in through the mail. So they will go back in and add those into the system later once they've kind of reconciled all of 2021 stuff. So where they're just kind of finishing up reconciling some of the 2021 stuff, it may very well be that they just, that is sitting waiting for someone to hand enter it. Um, but reach out to your liaison and we can definitely check because we want to make sure that that's what it is and that it just didn't get missed. Yes, because I know they're good. They'd sponsor again next year, but if they're not finding their in, in memory of it, it's a little more difficult. Mm -hmm. and, Did they do this, a was it this a one went in October 20th was the uh, the Harold J. Phillips that I was looking for and and he's not to be found. So anyway, um, I will call Tiffany again. I've, I've already talked to her about these um, in January and we still haven't. Um, and I talked to Beth in finance also. And so Okay, well, I'll reach out to them tomorrow, too, and we'll circle back on it. We'll make sure we get you some answers, okay? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, I've lost track. Who? Um, I'm going to, Susie, I'm going to come back to you, but I'm going to give Diana a chance because she hasn't asked a question yet. So, Diana, do you have a question? Yes. Um, I live in the South in a very... Um, Confederate area, and we have a lot of Confederate graves. Can we put Reese Across America Reese on those graves? Uh, yes. Or would we, they have? Nope. So we do Reese Across America will place we place Reese on all veterans um, grades, and the Confederate are considered um, veterans graves according to the. There's okay. A... Somebody asked something, and that <laughs> that connected with me because yes we do we do have some yeah and i just didn't know if they had to be like america they are american veterans and so thank you i like think that. so too well it's not a matter it's not a matter of opinion the united states um of veterans affairs has deemed them american veterans and so they will be they honored. have yes and we have right. well, that's what I, I do have i just needed to make that we could do that. Yeah, and I have that information, Diana, that we can make available to you if you need it for any questions about that. But there is, um, that was passed in, I think, like, I want to say like 50, 58 or so. I have to look back at the at the actual timeline. Yeah, I think it's 54. Yeah, so that is, um, so yes, we do have that yeah. information for you. Great news. Thank you. All right, Susie, you had another question? Yeah, I was just curious, what do they do if somebody's in a cremation wall? Do they just lay the wreath up against the wall or what? Um, so different cemeteries, it depends on how it's set up. Um, I, at most of them, they will place it at it like the bottom of the row all along the wall. Um, it depends on how they're spaced out. Um, there are some that have like hooks and they'll hang them on hooks along the wall. Um, it's, it's really up to the cemetery how they want them placed. So you just always want to make sure you check with them to see how they would prefer that done. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, can I speak? Um, mm -hmm. Can you guys hear me? Yep, go ahead. My, my hand, I don't know how, to, I can't find my hand thing to raise it, so I'm doing it. <laughs> Visually, um, to, um, I have um, a question and a point. 
uh, question is, is it possible to have on the website of Reese um, uh, the location of where the mobile education exhibit is traveling to? Because I hear it's on Facebook, but not everybody has Facebook. I do not have Facebook, but I really would like to see it on there. As far as I know, it's not on there posted so that people can tr request to have that vehicle come to their location if it's still possible throughout. I'm in California, so I've already sent an email to Don Queenie, um, and I hope that he'll be able to have the vehicle come our way. Um, they did last year. It's an awesome thing to have that all over the United States where all everybody's participating. I don't know if people on this Zoom are aware of it, but I, I just don't know that it's being publicized well enough to let people know how awesome it is to have that trailer come to your area, so. So Kathy, this is Amber. Um, we do have posted on the website this year's schedule for the 2022 tour. It has doesn't have all the individual stops, but it has where the MEE will be from a uh, basically month to month, um, kind of where the region of the country is if you go to reads across oh, it is posted there is a there's a press release that announced the tour it's in the press room and if you go to readsacrossamerica.org slash mee you can learn where uh, there's a place where you can submit um to have the trailer you know a request for the trailer and there's more information available there so where on the website what where do you click on to to locate that are you guys seeing my screen? Because I did just share um, the website. Oh, okay. Um, so if you go to the menu yeah. and under the, oops, just kidding, <laughs> um, the special programs, you'll see where it says mobile education exhibit. Yep. And then this where it says confirmed events, you can click on that and it's going to take you to, um, well, that just goes to the Facebook page. So, yeah, but it does. If you go into the news section, Kathy, there is, a, and I, I will find the link and send okay. It to Maybe I Sean, appreciate Sean, it. if you're on here, I don't see you, but I think you, I saw you earlier. Can you post a link to the news article on the, and, and the, the oh, trailers, sure. the trailer gets pretty, pretty regular. Um, we're getting, it's getting a lot of coverage, Kathy, but I, I appreciate that very much. But we're, we're getting okay. coverage in every state. We're, we're getting lots of coverage. Oh, good. Us. So um, he's coming, they're coming to California. <laughs> I'm being selfish, but hey, this year. they came last year. <laughs> if you've already reached out to Don, Don will be yeah. in touch if it's and, feasible to go to your location. Okay. And one last thing I'll say that if, if people don't know about the Reads Across America radio, I really encourage them to listen to that thing. That is awesome. You get awesome updates. And Tuesday's my favorite day. It's Trucking Tuesday. But um, I feel like I'm a commercial for it. But it's really awesome. It's from Maine. So it's a three hour difference for me in California, but I still listen to it at five this morning. It's awesome to get updates and, and just to check into it if anyone hasn't yet. And you do it on your Google device or your Alexa, whatever. Just say play Reefs Across America radio. It's awesome. Thank you. Kim. <laughs> Anyhow, appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Thank any you. other questions before we wrap it up? Diana, did you have another question or was your hand just still raised? It's still raised and I don't know how to cut it off. So okay. just <laughs> I just don't want to be like, oh, bye and just ignore you. So no, no, <laughs> I'm good. Away. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks everyone for joining us tonight. And um, we will be sending out an email um, with the slides for this afterwards. And um, we'll see you guys all again next month. Thanks, Julie. Thanks. Thank Bye. you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Julie. Thanks, Harris. Thank you. Thank you. Julie. Thank I you, everybody, for participating and doing Reese. Awesome. I have a quick question. I just took over. Um, so this is my my very my first year. I was part of it last year. Um, um, and if you know anything about scouting, I'm I'm if you can see my back, my background, um, I'm a, I'm, in, I'm highly involved in scouts, but um, I'm, I was uh, transferred over as the, as the main per, main person um, for our location, and um, I'm still trying to get used to it, and um, I only knew about this webinar because um, the person that was in charge of it last year forwarded me the email link saying, hey, did you get this? And I checked 
everywhere on my in my email and I never got the original email. So I don't know exactly who or how I need to check. What um, state are you in? Illinois. I'm okay. with St. Peter Lutheran Church. Okay, so you're going to just want to make sure you reach out to Rochelle. Um, it may be because we sent, they send out, um, um, they sent out a, an email to all the location coordinators. So we just want to make sure that we've got your name on our system as being updated, um, that you got that. So if you reach out to her, and that's um, R. Bergeson at mm -hmm. ReadsCrossAmerica.org. Um, you can, and Rochelle, if you're on there, if you want to drop your number and email into the chat um, for her, um, we'll get that taken care of for you. Okay, because I'm, I'm, I'm able to log into the dashboard and everything. I was just trying to play around with it because I'm like, okay, I'm not sure exactly, you know, what has been done or anything like that. So um, yeah, because we'll it may just be that we just don't have you on the right email in the file. We might have had a typo. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes we go to spam. Um, yeah, I looked in, I, I even looked out. in the spam folder and it wasn't there. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just reach out to her. She'll get you taken care of. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Brenda. All right. I everyone. have a question. Yep, I have one. <laughs> um, <clears throat> other than bugging my, uh, bugging Trish over and over, how can I look at the sponsorship groups for my cemetery and know whether or not they've signed back up again this year? Is there any way for me to be able to see that? Um, so in the supporting sites, um, you can see, that's where you can see all of the um, groups for yours. And I think it will say whether it's like not live um, or live. Um, <clears throat> So that you know if they're if it's not live then that means that you know they're not participating anymore um and you can definitely email them um but we don't really have a super easy way to just say like oh these are ones that haven't you know signed up um other than just email I, I i have a couple who haven't participated didn't participate um in 2021 and haven't responded to any emails but they're still on the location page as a sponsorship group. So I was just wondering, rather than having to constantly bug Trisha to, and asking her which ones haven't signed back up, so. Yep, and then the pages, the ones that are not um, no longer participating, they are supposed to be removed. That is something that's a part of our yearly maintenance that we're working on um, with our IT team right now. Okay. So typically you wouldn't see those and someone just recently pointed out that they were still seeing those. So um, that is currently in queue to be corrected. So that might be with problems. Okay, thank you very much. All you guys right. are always helpful. <laughs> we try most of the time. We're, we, most of the time and we and have and good it, answers. Other times I have to say, <laughs> um, let me get back to you on that. <laughs> but I, I would rather you say that than give me something, some false information. <laughs> Well, good. All right. Well, thanks all for joining, and I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Thanks, Julie. Thank you. Bye.